Hello, and welcome to CRPS Contender, my complex regional pain syndrome education channel. Today's video is Compressed Cranium, Neuroinflammation, Physiology. This video is part of my Mind as Matter Mega series, so if you would like to watch these in any particular order, here is your listicle. Alright, let's hop right into it. Neuroinflammation is the innate immune response of the nervous system when homeostasis is disturbed. It is characterized by demyelination and degeneration. Demyelination is damage to the fatty wrap of myelin sheathing that surrounds axons that allows electrical signals to move quickly, basically at warp speed, hyperdrive, and degeneration, which is the slow, progressive dysfunction and loss of neurons and axons. Neuroinflammation typifies all neurological diseases. If you look to the right here, you can see the atrophy that occurs during neuroinflammation if it's been going on for a long time. Neuroinflammation is one of the major factors of CRPS and plays a huge role in cognitive ability. Microglia exert dual roles in neurodegeneration, acting both as instigators of damage and as the guardians of brain homeostasis. In mechanisms reminiscent of neuroinflammation, such as the involvement of complement components and microglia synapse pruning. A synapse pruning is when old pathways that you don't use anymore, old connections in your brain that aren't getting utilized, get pruned away so that you're not holding on to useless junk in your brain, basically, so that your brain can be efficient. This occurs in healthy brains as well as during neuroinflammation. It is thought that vascular breakdown or leakage in the blood-brain barrier may be a very critical step in allowing autoantibodies access to the neuroautoantigens of CRPS patients. Now, in case you don't remember what that is, an autoantibody is an antibody produced by your immune system that attacks yourself, and an autoantigen is a part of yourself that is labeled an enemy to be obliterated. A localized breakdown of the blood-brain barrier allows autoantibodies to infiltrate into the basal ganglia. In this context, the neurovascular lesion is both an organic lesion and a functional lesion. This means it affects the structure of the brain and its capacity to function. Neuroinflammation does this a lot, where it generates structural and functional changes simultaneously. In CRPS patients, features of central sensitization appear to involve a complex set of neuroinflammatory responses involving NMDA receptors, glial cell activation, and the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines from neurons, glia, and leukocytes. Now remember, leukocytes are your white blood cells that are part of your immune system that runs throughout your body. At the cellular level, neuroinflammation can produce structural lesions in the following ways. By demyelinating axonal fibers, now remember that is the fatty substance that wraps around the long skinny parts of neurons so that signals can go fast, Stripping the synapses of cell bodies by microglia, which means pruning away synapses even if they're not being abandoned, they're just being attacked. Autoimmune attacks on specific interneurons, which are the three specific receptors that we discussed in the neuroautoimmunity videos, which are two adrenergic receptors and one muscarinic receptor. Sprouting of afferent axonal terminals which means receiving more sensory input so that you are increasing the signals that you are receiving from your body. A dieback of sensory nerve endings, which means you might notice this particularly in your hands or feet, where maybe your fingertips are now less sensitive than your palm or your forearm, something of that nature where they're being pruned backwards. And altered dendritic arborizations, which are just the branches of your neuronal dendrites. Now, this dendritic here, this is not referring to dendritic cells, the immunosurveillance cells. This is referring to the branching ends of your neurons, and those are called dendrites. Numerous structural and functional changes take place in neural networks as a result of altered cytokine expression. To describe the effects of neuroimmune activation, it's important to consider how neuroinflammatory lesions and cytokines affect the connectome the map of neural connections within the nervous system. This means that even if your neurons were not being attacked or affected really in any way, if they cannot connect to each other, your brain will not work because your brain works in a network. And if they cannot network, you cannot function. Cascades of intercellular signaling allow neural inflammation to migrate either forward or backward 
from the primary sites of neural inflammation. Once it's in your basal ganglia, it can move. It does not get stuck there. It can go anywhere else in the brain. CRPS symptoms might be categorized using one or more of the following mechanistic processes and concepts, which could result in the type of lesions indicated. I did not come up with any of these terms. These are well-researched categories by professionals, which I am certainly not a medical professional, so I am pulling directly from them here. The infiltration of autoantibodies into nervous tissues, which would be a functional lesion. The infiltration of white blood cells into the nervous tissue, which would be a structural and a functional lesion. Focal sites of cytokine imbalance, which would be a functional or dynamic lesion. Dynamic meaning it comes and goes. Remote neuroimmune activation of glia, which would be a structural and functional lesion. The breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, which would be a structural lesion. The loss of inhibitory tone, which is a functional lesion. The excessive loop gain in neuronal circuits would be a dynamic lesion. Thalamic neural inflammation, which is both structural and functional. Loss of sensory gating, which is functional. Synaptic conversion, which is functional. Thalamocortical dysrhythmia, which is dynamic. The distortion of the somatotopic map, which is structural and functional. And altered connectivity within the brain, which is dynamic and functional. So if you're experiencing particular symptoms of dysfunction, what areas of the brain might be being damaged to get that response. For pain perception and somatosensory function, this is going to usually involve the thalamus and the somatosensory cortex. For autonomic function, this would be mostly with your hypothalamus. For cognition and memory, this would be your hippocampus and your frontal lobes. For your motor function, this would focus on your basal ganglia. For inattention, that would be in your parietal lobe. For your pain modulation, this would be paraaqueductal gray. For the integration of bodily experiences, this would be in your insula. And for the progressive nature of the CRPS central changes, this would be uh, inflammatory brain cascades that send the dysfunction elsewhere. CRPS is often viewed as a biopsychosocial disorder for which the successful treatment must target concurrently the biological, psychological, and social components. In the next video, I will be discussing what this looks like in practice as this deals with a lot of terminology, which I know I didn't really break down, but for sake of the length of time, I'm not going to. So if you want to see how this can affect your daily life, go on to the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like the content I'm creating here, subscribe. You're welcome to share anything on my channel. If you'd like to contribute to my Patreon, that is listed below. And as always, relevant sources will be linked in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you next time.